On today's episode of Watch Jericho, we're here with my newest acquisition and one I'm incredibly excited about, the Selectria Force, a car you've probably never even heard of, unless you watched the video I just made about Colorado. What is going on guys? I am Watch J Argo and today, like I said, I'm here with one of the rarest cars in the world and one I am incredibly excited to own and share with you guys. This is a Selectria Force. We're not gonna start the story with the Selectria though. We're gonna start the story with a car that I have dreamed my entire life of owning. One I doubt there's anything better than or more rare, the GM EV1. Now the GM EV1 was a full battery electric vehicle the GM built from 96 to 99, and they built just a hair over 1,000 of them. And they leased all of them. So, nobody ever actually owned an EV1, and the owners were incredibly upset about this. When it came time for their leases to end, GM said, give us all of your cars back, we're gonna destroy them all. And the owners, as you would expect, were none too pleased. So there's a few left in the world, maybe 20, 30, 40 max, but there's, about you know 40 GM EV ones in the world that didn't get crushed because they were left to universities with the promise that they were never to be put on the road again. That said, a few slipped through the cracks. There's a few that are complete, and there are, from what I know, like five that drive. So the EV one is a life goal car. It has a beautiful interior. It's a beautiful design. It was full electric, and unfortunately, the only one I've ever seen in the world is in the Peterson Museum in LA and I don't know if I'll ever see or drive another. I'd love to though. So I got the next best thing, a GM car, the Geo Metro four door, and it's full electric. And it was actually built by a company and that company was Selectria. So this is a Selectria Force, a 1996 Selectria Force base model basically. There were a bunch of different versions of this. There's the base, there's the GT, there's the RS, there's a two door, and there's a four door, and the options were incredibly cool, and these things cost starting price about three times more than the Geo Metro that you would have bought in 1996. Many of you know and love the Geo Metro because obviously it's a very small and light car that gets incredible gas mileage because many of them have three cylinders in them. One liter, three cylinder engines. I've owned them on the channel before. You feel free to go back and check out those videos if you wanna see one with a gas engine in it. Now, those cars were about $12,000 in 1996 for a nice one, honestly, for like an LSI. So you could have a very nice, usable, lightweight car for about 12 grand. But for the people that wanted to be a part of the future, not the old fossil-fueled gas engine machine, you could buy this, the Selectria Force, and it's battery electric, which blows my mind. So we're gonna take a tour of this car after we talk about it just a little bit more. 400 of these were built, and a ton of them were sold to the government. A ton of them were sold to the military, and public electric utilities and stuff like that. Many electric utilities, even to this day, use all electric fleets because they're paying nothing for power, so why wouldn't they use their free power to run their vehicles? Many of these were sold to utility companies, just like I said, and a lot of them stayed on the road for quite a while. Now, really all the posts you see about these started ending in about 2013, and since then, I think they've basically all disappeared. If I had to put a number on it, I guess there's about 50 of these left in the world and I'm really excited to own one of them. So the base model like this is powered by a bunch of lead acid deep cycle batteries. And then there was the GT because it obviously had way better range and more power was powered by nickel cadmium batteries. And then there was the RS, the racing one. And that one was powered by nickel metal hydride batteries. And then as time went on, owners have lithium swapped these things, and I bet it's a monster with a lithium swap. Lead acid is honestly a very poor technology. It's what your normal car starting battery is made out of, and they can be cycled about a thousand times. Then uh, nickel metal hydride will usually cycle about 2000 times, and lithiums you could probably get 3000 cycles out of. And they don't cost that much more, so if you go to lithiums, even though they do cost a little bit more, it's a much more efficient way to power the vehicle. With that said, a $33,000 Geo Metro. How ridiculous is that? I do wanna point out a couple prices on some options. You can still get uh, Selectria's website pulled up on the old Wayback Machine here. 
and I have all of the prices. So four seat, force with 60 mile range, the base price, $26,000. Now that comes with nothing. These cars were optioned the $26,000 price with no AC, no power brakes, no power steering. It's a pretty bad package, no cruise control. It just goes on and on and on. So pretty much everybody optioned them with uh, air conditioning and that was a $3,000 option. And the radio, <laughs> how is the radio a $500 option? You know they were paying 50 bucks for that thing. Cruise control, $300 option. Power assist brakes, basically a $300 option. Uh, the premium lead acid batteries, why did you have to pay more for those? Anyway, uh, $1,100 more dollars for battery management. Basically they nickel and dimed you on this car with stuff that you really wanted to have. And then there were more cool options like roof mounted solar panels, a la Fisker Karma, and you know some of the Mercedes and stuff like that where they have solar roofs that power the climate systems. So how did the Selectrias come to exist? Well, it's obviously a Geo Metro. GM would ship them gliders, even though I know they also shipped them a bunch of complete cars because they had in their inventory a lot of parts from the Geo Metro that came from the gas engine one. But they would ship them a car with no drivetrain in it and they would convert these things. And they did cool things like leaving out the gas tank because the batteries sit where the gas tank is and replacing the uh, fuel fill with what's a normal 110 volt plug there. You just plug your extension cord into to charge this thing. Kind of a cool touch. And pretty much everything else as you walk around it is standard Geo Metro action here. Now the hubcaps are missing in the rear. In the front, you can see they are the standard tri-spoke Geo Metro caps with a Selectria logo slapped on it. And everything else is very, very Geo Metro here. So we're gonna go through every inch of it. But before we do that, I wanna also mention they built S10s, the uh, Selectria E10 as well, which is a fully electric S10. I've seen one of those before. Huge shout out to the subscriber that brought one of those to my meetup. The bed lifts up backwards and you can see all of the batteries that sit between the frame rails and outside of the frame rails. A really cool electric truck and the military bought a ton of those. I think the military also bought quite a few of these and this car won a bunch of electric car races in 1996. So the competition was not fierce, but as always, the government gravy train jumped on board and bought a lot of these things for municipal utilities and you know the military and other government applications because you know they wanted the future to be electric. They're still trying that today. Before we get into the really juicy details, let's show you guys the interior because it is quirky. You can see we've got a standard GM VIN there. It looks like the windshield's been replaced. That's not a Geo or a GM windshield there. And we do have the Chevy roadside support sticker right there. 1-800-CHEV-USA. Pull out antenna. Probably needs pulled out. It looks like it's, it's kind of stuck. There we go, the radio reception is horrible in here and I think we just found out why. So, coming inside. Selectria did brag about how this car was great and very efficient because it's lightweight, but that's just because the Geo Metro was super lightweight because it didn't come with anything. So they were really on one when they were like, we have the best EV because it's highly efficient because it's lightweight. Yeah, man, the Geo Metro is really lightweight and the batteries only added about 300 pounds after they took the engine out. It doesn't weigh too much, it's literally just a Geo Metro, and they really played that card as hard as they could. Proving this to you, look at the door panel. We have crank windows here that need lubed up. They work really well for the first two inches, and then, you know, they're kind of sticky. And uh, we've got no power locks, nice little door handles there in the cup, and the, you know, simple plastic lightweight stuff here on the dash. We have a very custom dash where the gas gauge is gone. And you know what, the voltmeter here, the analog voltmeter, that's not even included if you buy one of these. That is a $300 option itself. Over here we have the Selectria battery level meter. And this is an amp hour counter and it shows whether power is flowing into the battery or out of it. And the light flashes faster on each channel to tell you what the motor controller is doing. Here in the front we have a normal speedometer. I would assume it's cable driven and very simple. 47 1,689 miles. And all of those miles were put on this thing less than 60 miles at a time. And from my experience, less than 40 miles at a time. 40, 8,000 miles in reality, 40 miles at a time. That is some insane daily driving of this vehicle. I gotta say, somebody really, really loved this car. The analog voltmeter, like I said, it looks like that's always on. It must be directly connected to the battery. It's showing 160 volts right now and that is what I typically see from this battery at rest. So, hazards, 
old school horns, Geo Metro style. Over here, the instrument cluster dimmer, defrost, normal light switch, and also the normal turn signal switch from a Geo Metro. This is like the same climate control that was in every car in the 90s, Nissans, Geos, everything like that. They all love to use the same climate control and it works. We've got an old school JVC cassette player there that looks right at home in the center. And honestly, it still works to this day. The display is kind of failing, but pretty solid. And below that, ashtray, of course, as everything had in the 90s, cigarette lighter, and uh, we got a little change holder. They didn't even bother lighting up the ignition it's, it is a Geo, okay? There is nothing fancy about this car. Here is the Selectria part of the car. The gear shift, it's straight up missing, as you can see. So we have the uh, power modes for forward, economy, normal, power, set the vehicle back to off, and of course, reverse, if you need to back up, that is how you change gears. This is the electric heat on off. If you have the heat all the way on, it does nothing until you turn this on as well. The blower has to be on before the heat turns on. Uh, otherwise, it just disables that altogether. And of course, your regen selector. When the regen is set to dry, you have full regen, you let off the gas, and it starts dumping power back into the battery. When it's set to slippery, it just coasts when you let off the gas. Coming on down the center console, we have the e-brake, typical 90s e-brake. I think this is the same console and everything out of the Metro, the Tracker, everything like that. And of course, a little pocket right there to hold a few things. Oh, we can't forget, it's got nice cup holders. Sometimes they're worthless and they're a little sticky there just because they probably never got used, but it's got cup holders, so always a nice touch. Shout out to Geo for that one. Here in the glove box, we have what appears to be uh, either, I don't know, it kind of looks like cereal, so I assume this is for the motor controller programming or something like that. And a few more wires right there. BMS or temperature management or something like that, so. Ooh, the Geo Manual. Never saw that before. 1996 Geo Metro Owner's Manual. Look at that awesome retro color scheme there. Yeah, this is not the Selectria Manual. That is the out of the box GM Geo Metro Owner's Manual. Hey, look at that. This is how to drive the car. I had no idea that was there. This is like just printed and stuck on there with double-sided, uh, like a laminated decal basically, so. Very cool on economy. Let's see, on power, hard driving hills are 60 plus. You should see 30 to 40 amp hours. That's what you'll see there on that gauge. And that's about 25 miles of driving. That's about what I'm seeing out of this car. And that's hard driving hills or 60 mile an hour. So this is honestly a very cool quick reference. You just flip down your sun visor and boom, how to use your Selectria. Before running out of energy, the vehicle will become sluggish. It will still travel several miles at a reduced speed, but plug it in as soon as possible exclamation point over here on the passenger side we've got a nice little mirror there's no cover or anything like that it's just a mirror great looking geo metro seats i gotta say these patterns are they're gonna stand the test of time forever they look amazing they're in good condition the whole car is in very good condition it lived in california all of its life the back seat is as basic as a back seat could ever come there's no armrest there is no center console there are no cup holders the only thing you get is a nice little cabin light right there. Being a California car its entire life, it honestly looks incredible and there's no rust, but the dash has been absolutely beat into oblivion. There is nothing left of the original finish on that dash. So let's take the Geo Metro key here and see if we can open the trunk. This would not work in Colorado. But it works perfectly in Kansas. This is so cool, look at that. Selectria charger right there, battery charger, force AC junction box, a bunch of fuses in there, thermal management, preheat console, option, serial cables all over the place. Serial to program the charger, serial to program whatever this is, the BMS it looks like. Oh wait, is that, is that even hooked up? And another battery charger, so this is probably a supercharger model. That was another option. It's got two battery chargers in here. Here's an extra cord, plug it in. Here are the rear batteries, just a ton of deep cycles, 650 cold cranking amps. They are just shoved in there. I definitely think this has the BMS because there are little wires going to each battery as well. That was a good look at the rear batteries, spare tire in there as well. Uh, at least they're easy to access. And now on to the insanely cool part, the part that I cannot wait to share with you guys. 
under the hood. In under the hood, this thing is, it's just pure wonder. The coolest thing ever, engineered by literally just throwing a bunch of stuff in there and making it work. You can see the holes for the GeoMetro badge right there. And now we are under the hood where that one liter three cylinder should be sitting in a normal GeoMetro, but no, instead, We've got a battery box down underneath there. This big metal cover, the bolts on there, that covers up the front batteries. Here we have the inverter, or at least the motor controller, and a bunch of wires. There's all the three phase, it looks like, that comes over to the actual motor. There, right behind us, is that big electric motor. This side, right over here, is where the actual drive assembly is that drops down to the transaxle and it's just a one speed so it's it's more of just a transfer case that comes out of the side of the motor right there there's the cvs one down there one right down there it's tough to see camera doesn't like that at all but that's it a bunch of batteries that feed this big old motor controller and then it goes into this giant motor it's really not even that big i gotta say so over here we can see the brake proportioning valve it looks like and like i said no power brakes which doesn't seem true, it's got a booster. I don't know where that booster is supposed to go, but I don't think the power brakes work at all. It should have like a motor that's running a pump that creates vacuum so you have power brakes. But I don't see that literally anywhere. It's this hose. There might be a motor in there that's not working. Over here, DC to DC from the uh, big, the high voltage DC pack, 156 volts down to 12 volts. They print all the specs on everything. This is so cool. It can do 48 amps of 12 volt output. Wow, and it doesn't shut off. You can hear it. I hope you guys can hear that, but that thing is always on. Over here, more magic, look at that. There's a vacuum reservoir. There is a pump for the brakes and it just doesn't work. We gotta figure that out. Air conditioning motor controller. Hilarious, 156 volts, 10 amps, continuous current, 20 amps, max output. And that runs this big old DC motor right here, one horsepower, and that motor directly drives the AC compressor with a little Gates belt. Ooh, the compressors. It's sounding a little crusty. Well, that compressor might be hurt. That's easy to sort out if we can figure out what vehicle that came off of. At least it's the easiest fix of my life. Other than swapping over the belt drive, that's a very interesting belt drive for an AC compressor. Uh, nowadays, as you know, we just run three phase right into the compressor. It's got two sides. The motor would be sitting here and the compressor would be sitting there and you can have fully variable AC and that's pretty much the best way to do AC in the entire world. Electric wipers, bunch of wiring crammed in here. This, yeah, this is the throttle. That is the actual throttle position sensor and it's just a cable running into an electronic potentiometer. However they got the throttle done, that is it. Here in the front, one electric fan to cool the uh, condenser here for the AC and we got a dryer and a horn and that is it. That's like basically every mechanical part of the Selectria force. So everything on this car works except the AC compressor is noisy like I said and there's no vacuum for the power brakes and I didn't even know I had the option. I thought it was a really low option car because the power brakes don't work. Also, these giant cables right here are the battery disconnect, as you would have guessed, because they run into the motor controller there. You just yank them out like that. And there's a couple more leads there that go into the battery controller as well. It looks like you unplug if you need to take everything apart. But I'll just plug that right back in. There's a lot of serial data in this car. You can see a 25 pin right there, DB9 right there, just so much serial. And I'm assuming the throttle controller is probably like that wire or something like that. So, pretty outrageous. Somebody did sign this one as well. You can see it. It's a pure electric vehicle that qualifies as a low emission vehicle and ZEV in California there. Uh, somebody signed this, Stephen something something. Stephen M, I can't tell, in 10 of 05. I'm not sure who that is, but maybe they're big in the EV game. I think I just figured out why the DC DC never shuts off, which it should. It's because there's not a 12 volt battery because they used all 12 volt batteries to power the car and then they didn't have any more. So <laughs> they just left the batteries running all the time. I don't want to leave out one other fun Selectria fact. They bragged about the handling of this car, which I gotta say is terrible. There is no chance this has good handling in any world. It rolls all over the place. 
and it's so slow that it, it's tough to get out of its own way. But they bragged about its weight distribution because of the five batteries in the front and 12 batteries in the rear. And I think with the motor and everything else they put in the front, it's probably actually pretty close to 50-50. So I don't think it helps you, but it does technically have pretty good weight distribution. Some nice engineering. So now the Selectria is on the charger and it's probably about perfectly full. It's been on the charger all night. This is also, I think it's the rapid charger because of the dual battery charger. So it should take about four hours to recharge. Who knows how many times, like I said, maybe about a thousand before the batteries are trash again. <laughs> but we're gonna get it out on the road right now and see just how well this Electria Force drives. All right, Jake, I have driven this car. I have my thoughts on this car. He's gonna drive this thing. So go ahead and fire it up. Okay, so turn it to start and wait. I know it's on, but just turn it to start real quick. Okay, you're good. And now shut the e-brake off and put it in gear. Rev. Now, you need like 75% throttle for this car to move. He's pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing, Dude, he's pushing. Dude, this is real unnerving. <laughs> it feels like it's gonna explode out of the garage. There it is, 75% ah. <laughs> throttle. I, if you've driven an EV from the modern era, you're gonna hate this car. I, I have to tell you, it will crush your dreams. If you've driven a car, you're gonna hate this car. <laughs> Turn the lights on, oh, they're, yeah. they're old school. There you go. The old school lights sure work great. How's the no power steering life? Uh, honestly, can't even tell. Really? I think it's really hard to steer. Dude, you're, I... you're gonna have to floor it to make it move up the driveway. <laughs> Oh boy. All right, and then he flipped it over. Oh. We'll put it in power. You want to keep it in power. Oh, there's a whole bunch of different settings. Yep. 75% okay. throttle and turn it as hard as you can. <laughs> I did, it's, my first car was a Honda Civic with no power steering, so this, pretty, pretty normal to me. Okay, so that that's it's got not a, as bad as I expected. Little, it's You can tell it's got power, but the way you have to get into that power is what the problem is. Because yeah. you have to floor it at all times, or it doesn't even move. We're doing a whole 15, okay. Fi 15. Feel the hit. 20. 20. 20 25. Oh, you, you can keep it wide open. Oh, it, that, it, that motor mount is unhappy. I thought that motor mount was flaky, but it feels fine. Wow, it's got regen braking? It has really good regen braking. Wow. Yes. I didn't expect it to have that. Yes, sir. All right, let's show them. So right now you can see out and how much battery we've consumed, which is 0.4 amp hours. And now you can see in, that green LED is in. So the regen is charging the battery at the moment. That's pretty cool. And we have about 140 volts right now. E a little under 160 volts just after taking it off the charger. Does it go faster with the headlights off? It probably does go faster with the headlights off. Quick test, okay, floored. <laughs> you can't tell. Yeah, no, I didn't feel anything. <laughs> oh man. Oh, it's loud. It is very loud, but in the coolest way. This sounds like iRobot in real life. How's the how's this handling? The handling's terrible. It ooh, it it, ooh. it might be the worst handling car I've ever. It's worse than a Geo Metro. The way it rolls over. It's yeah. It it <laughs> does drive like a Geo Metro with a bunch with, more weight in places it's not supposed to be. Yes, sir. There's a lot of caster on this steering. A lot of caster, steering wheels off a little bit. It needs an alignment. It could probably use some tires. The tires are dry rotted. I mean, with how low power this is you might actually gain some speed from an alignment i think so oh i think i got him man oh man having to push a pedal down that far is just so unnerving the pedal freaks you out in this car but it's, at the same time it's not like i mean what are you gonna do whiskey throttle it like, that's <laughs> floored right yeah now. you're keeping it wide open we're doing 25. he's got it wide open. every other ev from this era would be going like a hundred from that much time would they uh, no, no, no. I mean, I'm, no, no. I meant like the Tycon, oh, Volt, Plaid. Okay, I, I yeah. was like, we would have been in jail by the time you got to 25. For sure. Yeah. Oh, I love that radio. Fired up the old school JVC radio. Jake's holding it. Yeah, I'm still on. I'm, I'm, I'm floored. I'm, that. Look how fast it consumes power. I'm writing my memoir right now. <laughs> the batteries will be dead by the time you get to 70. I, I'm kidding. We'll get, we'll get about 24 amp hours before it dies. I think. Stuff. So we've got we've used 10% of the battery to leave my house. That's where we're at right now. Oh boy. <laughs> I... This car, it's entertaining to no end. To no end. Yeah. Three amp hours so far. We're we're running out of power. If you have to climb a hill, it destroys the battery though. Yeah. Any hill. 
any hill will destroy the battery, which is why Ryan sold this to me because he lived in Colorado. And I didn't realize when he was like, it's not very good in the hills. It's horrible in the hills, horrible. I have a feeling we'll get about 10 miles out of this. So you have to either drive it incredibly slowly and the acceleration is what soaks up all your power, right? Once it's yeah. coasting, it's not that bad. But you either have to floor it and get out of it or just try to super baby the car all the time. Yeah, and this so. 24 amp hour is at what, 180 volts? Uh, about, it's 156, 160 seems to be about what it's rated at. That. So yeah, we'd expect 180. 180 is a pretty normal car config. But as you guys saw, all the labels on the Selectria parts said 156. So wide open throttle. I can feel the power! I'm gonna mess this range up even more. So we'll turn the fan the on, heater on, and then we'll turn the heat on. If you turn the fan off, the heat will turn on. Turn the fan. We're gonna use maximum power. We've just used the entirety of the capacity of a Honda Insight battery pack. Those are five <laughs> amp hours total at 150, 160 volts. Uh, if I turn the radio on, we'll probably lose another mile, I guess, <laughs> just based on quick maths. <laughs> it's better and worse than I expected it to be. All exactly. At the same time. Like I love it. I I love the idea of the car. I love the engineering that went into it. But oh my, it is so bad. While being amazing. Yeah. I love flooring it up a hill to see how fast we can make the number go up. Yeah. Look at all the battery you're putting back. Ooh, those unassisted. Point eight two. Uh, point eight. You're you're walking a lot of it back right there. Yeah. Those unassisted brakes. I don't think I've ever driven a car with unassisted brakes. No power brakes is a nightmare. It's uh, Something's wrong. It does have power brakes. It's just broken. Yeah. We put a tenth back during the regen right there, and we have used two tenths of that since we took off about 20 foot ago. <laughs> and now four tenths. This thing <laughs> blows through its batteries, but it sure is cool. Yeah. So I got to fully charge it, and I'm going to take it out and do some real testing. I want to do zero to 60s. For you guys, you gotta see the zero to 60. It's very bad. <laughs> and I wanna do a top speed run because no one's ever topped it out, I think. I know it'll go 75, but will it go 100? We'll find out. I love it. I hate it. But most of all, I love it. We're at 7.3 amp hours so far, just to we've used go around the block. <laughs> Each one of these blocks is one mile. So we've gone three miles and we've used half of the battery. Gosh. That's pretty bad. This is a AC motor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. Yeah, it's three phase. Um, okay, I, didn't, I was like, did you do that or did it do it? Yeah, I'll show you guys what happens when it runs out of battery too because it's, it's really bad when the battery dies. Well, that's what it's like to drive an electric GL Metro. Something I thought I'd never see and something you might've thought you'd never see. I love this stuff. <laughs> Dude, it's so cool. You gotta smoke that Nissan Murano. Oh yeah, hang on. Smoke him. Is Ask he, him what the retail is on that pal. Is he accelerating? Cause I am. <laughs> uh, I, I know you're wide open throttle and we're barely to the speed limit, but I, I think he's coasting. You gotta pull up alongside, see how fast we leave this Yeah, you, you gotta honk it off. <laughs> see ya. Oh, we're actually moving. Later, yeah, we're going down a hill. That, that's, yeah, that's, the, that's all of that. The key is the hills. <laughs> I forgot to tell Jake, if it's on any kind of hill, it just rolls back immediately. What, what is slippery regen? Slippery right? shuts the regen off, so it's oh. coasting. So dry is real regen, which is 100%, oh. and slippery means it lets it slip, like, you know, like a clutch would slip kind of thing. This is my motion for that, clutch slip. That's horrible terminology. <laughs> yeah. It should just say regen or no regen. Yeah, yeah. regen, on or off. Yeah. No, regen, dry or slippery. Dry or slippery. What are we doing? Sound engineering here? It's like, yeah, no, my reverb's not wet enough. It, feel, it feels so, so wet in the echo chamber. Like, what? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you have to set the manual e-brake all the time. There you have it. That's the Selectria Force. I am very happy to own it. We've got a bunch of cool stuff coming. We're basically gonna kind of restore it to try to make it look like it was when it was brand new. That's kind of what I want to do. And I'd love to fix that AC compressor. So we've got a little bit of a to-do list. We're gonna tackle those things. We're gonna keep driving around this very limited range electric vehicle. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop. WatchJRGO.com for cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. All right, Jake, what do you think about this engineering marvel? Um, 
Well, it certainly was engineered, wasn't it? It was 1990. You got to give them. It was 1996. Yeah. It's a whole lot of free credit that comes with that. Yeah. It's, I mean, it, there's not any other way that you really could have done it. Look at that. They approve. The dogs approve of the Selectria. They didn't approve of the Jag. 